Hi there, I'm Alex Feisley. I'm the CEO of Gravital, and I'm here today to give you a quick tutorial on using NetMaker, our new mesh overlay tool built on top of WireGuard. So NetMaker consists of a MongoDB database, a server written in Golang using gRPC, and a front end written in React.js, all of which has been Dockerized and can be run with a simple Docker Compose file. So you can go to our repo and use this as you'd like. So the first thing you're going to need is a server to run NetMaker on. I've chosen an EC2 instance, but you can use whatever you'd like. Then you're going to need the Docker Compose file from the repo. So I've already pulled that in, but here it is. And the one value you're going to need to set is the backend URL. The backend URL should be pointed towards the IP of the server that you're using. So now that I have that, I'm just going to run sudo docker compose up. I'm going to run that in the background. And that's it. We now have our NetMaker central server up and running. So if we navigate to that endpoint, we'll now see that we have the UI up and running. And the first thing it's going to do is ask you to create a new admin user. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to give it a login. And there you go. We now have a new admin user who can use NetMaker. And this is going to be the person who manages all the networks that you want to create. But at this point, we have no networks, so we need to create a new one. So I just click Create Network, and I'm going to give it a name. I'll say MyNet. Doesn't really matter, but what you really need is an address range. So give it an address range of whatever size you want. This is a pretty big one, so I could add a whole lot of hosts to it. But in our demo, I'm just going to be adding two. And machines will be allocated addresses from this address range within your network. There's a whole bunch of default settings that you can put in here, and you can change them as you want. And these default settings are going to be passed along to your nodes unless they choose their own settings. So it's meant to be sort of bi-directional. So a machine can manage itself, or it can be managed from the central server. So now that we have our network ready to go, we need to create an access key to access it. So I'm only going to give it one use. And we're going to store that key to the side for later. And now we need to install NetMaker on one of our machines, because currently we have no nodes. So I'm here on my local workstation, and I want to install NetMaker. So what I'm going to be installing is the Net Client, which is the tool that interacts with the NetMaker server and with WireGuard locally to control the network. So this is a one command install. It's going to pull down the install script. And then we just need to give it a couple options. So one of those is your server URL. So let's add that in. And then we're going to need our network name, which is MyNet. So this is the network we're attempting to join. And we're going to need our access key which we just stored to the side there. And let's go ahead and run the install. So it goes ahead and it pulls the key. Oops. <laughs> and actually, we're getting a good demonstration of things that can go wrong and how it handles that. So you'll see here, it attempted to set itself up. It got most of the way there, but then it noticed something was wrong with the address. So then what it did was remove any remaining artifacts from the server. So we still got a clean instance here. So we can just go ahead and run that same command again. 
and remove the extra bits. So now we're running our install and we're good to go. You can see our node is now in the server. So what did this do? It first went to the local machine and grabbed some default settings. So for one, it put in a default password. We can change this at any time. Uh, it set the public endpoint and the local address, got the MAC address, created public and private keys. It wrote the settings to a local config file, and then it reached out to the central server and retrieved some additional settings. So it got its WireGuard address, it got a name for itself, it got a port, a keep alive, and now all of these settings are set up. So now, we should see that our net client is up and running and able to communicate with the central server. So this runs on a regular basis. It checks in with the central server and retrieves updates as needed. If we want to edit our local node, We have a net config file. Oops. And this is what stores the settings for our machine. Or, and this is the bi-directional component, we can edit it from within the central server. So we can change the interface or the listen port or the node name all from here as well. In a future version, we are going to add an option to disable the ability to set those from the central server, meaning that the admin won't be able to screw around with any of these machines if you want to create a network that's maybe more user-centric. So we have one machine set up. We want to add another one. But now we have no access key, so how are we going to access the network? Well, rather than use an access key this time, we're going to allow node sign up without keys. So how is that going to look? First, let's pull up our Ubuntu instance. So we now have my local machine and an Ubuntu instance over here, and we want to connect them together. So we're going to run that same command that we actually ran from over here. The one difference being is we don't have an access key. So let's remove that bit and run. So it ran mostly the same steps, but the one difference is it's marked as pending. And this can be useful in cases where you maybe want to create a more dynamic network where you don't necessarily know when and who might be joining your network but you want to be able to allow people to join it and then just approve them as needed. So while this machine has now been added into this network, it is marked in pending status. So you can see here it says approval required. So this can't actually access anything in the network yet. It's sort of sandbox. So in order to approve it, we just need to click approve. And now the node is approved. And that's all it takes. Now the net client is going to reach out to the server in about 30 seconds. And once it's done that, it will realize that it is no longer cordoned and, can, and it can now talk to the other nodes in the network. So that gives us two options for adding nodes into our network. We can either use access keys or allow sign up without keys. And then we can manage nodes at will, such as deleting them or editing them to remove them from the network. So that should have been enough time. And let's go ahead and check out WireGuard over here. We can now see that the other peer has been added into this node's peer list. And if you've worked with WireGuard and peer list, you know that usually this is not a dynamic thing. It's a little bit difficult to set up. So this peer is going to be added on this side as well. So they will both have each other. If we check this out, 
this one is added as well. So now we have two nodes in our network and they are able to talk to each other over WireGuard. So if I ping this guy, and this is 10.70.2 over here. And let's ping this guy. 10.70.1. And there you have it. We now have a peer-to-peer -peer connection over WireGuard. And this can be done for any number of machines that you want to add into the network. So that could be 10 machines, 20, 100. And as you add machines, the lists are going to get updated. And as you need to add or remove instances, you can do that using the central server. So one other note is, of course, we can create additional networks. I can call it whatever I want. And if you want, they can even have overlapping address ranges. But for now, I'll just give this one a different one. Um, I'm not going to go through the process of creating a whole other setup, but you get the idea. You can manage multiple networks in this way from one central location, add and remove nodes at will. And it just gives you a nice, easy way to manage all of that. So this has been my quick demonstration of NetMaker. If you go to the repo, you can get a lot more information. It has a lot of information under getting started. It has some API documentation. If you prefer not to use the UI, you can actually use the whole thing without the UI at all. And of course, we have a roadmap as well. So there's a lot of other stuff we'd like to add over time. And if you have any particular use cases that this isn't meeting, we'd love to hear about it and see what we can do next. So please give it a try and let us know what you think. Thanks.